Welcome to our channel. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another installment <laughs> of the Touch Dark. My yeah. name is Tiny Palati, and that. Yonella, <laughs> how do you say your name? Yonella Hazel. Yonella Hazel, yes. <laughs> He's Yonella, by the way, in case you didn't know. Yonella Hazel is the person that other people meet. But anyway, hi. <laughs> See you, Yonella. <laughs> Welcome to another installment, guys. We're excited to be here as usual. Um, this is the Couch Zai. If you're here for the first time, in my favorite words, welcome, welcome. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about, I think, something that we found to be our faith at the moment. Good change yeah. with God, you know, it always changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what we're going to discuss today is sanctification. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm blown away by how big this topic is. And so we decided to do like a two-parter to it. Is, that, is two-parter a word? Well, it's what the content people say, right? Two-parter. <laughs> so we're going to do a two-parter. <laughs> yeah. um, and this week, we're going to just discuss the, the what and the why of sanctification. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so today, we're just laying the groundwork, as Tiny said, to ensure that we actually know what sanctification is and why one must be sanctified. And then as we go on, we'll, we'll talk in part two about the process of sanctification, how it looks like, and also share our testimonies in that regard and the cost that one bears by um, actually yielding to the sanctification process. So we, we definitely are excited. Uh, we've been having a conversation for this episode for over a week now. We've been praying over it. We're excited about what God wants to do concerning this topic and exactly what he wants to teach us in this season where sanctification is concerned. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with just briefly explaining like what is sanctification. Um, and being the person that I am, I try to understand things thoroughly. Um, and so I have like a Bible definition, which is really what the meat of what we're going to be talking about comes from. Um, and then I have like just an Oxford dictionary definition just to help us, right? So this is from Yonela's Bible, actually, the NIV student Bible. Um, and it says that sanctification is an act of God by a believer. Um, oh, sorry. It's an act of God by which a believer conforms more and more to the image of God. That's just so packed on its own. Like, wow. <laughs> um, but also, so the Oxford Dictionary describes it as a noun. It says it's an action of making or declaring something holy or the action or process of being freed from sin or purified the action of causing something to be or seem morally right or acceptable. And the scripture that I was thinking about um, where this is concerned, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. I mean, there's obviously because it's the Bible and it's the word of God and it's him that sanctifies us. There's a lot of the word, you know, that speaks to this. Um, but the things that jumped out at me on these, it just, I think for me, it explains how the sanctification process, not only is it also inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it's done by him. Like he's the one that like runs it, right? So this verse says, but we should and are morally obligated as debtors always to give thanks to God for you, believers beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation. How? Through the sanctifying work of the spirit that sets you apart for God's purpose and by your faith in the truth of God's word that leads you to spiritual maturity. Firstly, the fact that God chose you right from the beginning for salvation, how through sanctification by the work of the spirit and by your faith in the truth, which is the word of God. And this is supposed to lead you to spiritual maturity. Already this is giving instruction, like salvation, sanctification precedes salvation like you get saved and then the sanctification process is supposed to by the spirit move you into the building of your faith in truth by the word of God and so for me I didn't even realize that this is what God was doing like it, it happened and I was like oh you're doing this to me <laughs> you know what I mean I didn't understand um, that by his grace this is actually what he was doing and I get why now 
the revelation that from our conversations, what we were starting to get is that this is a lifetime thing. Like this is gonna keep happening because if the Bible says that as we behold him, we change from glory to glory, it doesn't say until a specific point. It says as we keep beholding him. So then it makes me think if maybe you're not seeing, and this is what we're gonna talk about, like I think in, in the next um, segment so that you can gauge why or how your sanctification process maybe got hindered or you got stuck when you begin to look at scripture in a way that it's instructive if you're not seeing spiritual maturity that's a problem you should be able to see it through the sanctifying work of the spirit of god so it, it works in like i don't want to see if a two point step but in order for something to be revealed it seems as though there's something that you need to pass through so in order for you to even see um sanctification there must be a working in you by the spirit of God. Mm-hmm. And so I think the amazing thing that this started to do for the both of us is it started to make us really think like in accordance to the word about salvation. Mm-hmm. Because if it says that it precedes salvation, mm-hmm. then w- what when God says salvation, what is he talking about? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And not yeah. our ideology of what salvation is, but that salvation should have a next product, which is sanctification, sanctification. by the spirit of God. Mm. So I think when we spoke about this, it opened up so many doors. It opened up so many thinking patterns that God just did this, you know, in, in our minds mm. to stretch us, to yeah. begin to not just sit back and, and watch, but to actually engage God in his word and ask, mm. God, why are we not seeing this? Mm. Like, we should ask, why are we not seeing spiritual maturity? It's in your word. Why are we not seeing it? And this will also help us in terms of seeing how God has sanctified us in our own personal walks as a body, yes, but in our own personal walks. Because I was saying this to Anela yesterday. My walk is that it's like God is stretching my faith. I see him do it in me. <laughs> and then afterwards when I have a conversation with her, she'll mention a scripture and I'm like, what's happening to me? Very- uh, cool. Cool. I see <laughs> you. Know? you. <laughs> yeah. So that's also, I think, mm. one thing we noticed about our individual, like sanctification walks. Like, as I said, I only began to realize, like, way when we were talking about scriptures, that oh my god, this stuff happened to me for real. Mm. You know, the conviction of the word of God, the w- the word of God, literally starting to bear fruit in my life was because of the sanctification process that God was putting me through. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. No, definitely. Like the sanctification process, one thing that we literally have to put out there is that it looks different for different people. Look, Mm. the reason why we have to be sanctified is because we are all born into sin, right? By virtue of Adam and Eve's fall in the garden, all of mankind sinned. That's what the Bible Mm. said, right? So already we are born in a sin-like state. And then there's inheritances of patterns that are family linked or linked to your lineage, you know, so our processes are going to be different, um, even mm. though the end result is the same, which is to bear the image of God, as, as Tiny said, to move from glory to glory as we behold him, right? Now, our processes are not going to look alike because while our personalities are not the same, we did not struggle mm. with the same things before we came to Christ. And it's then very important to actually know also how God speaks to you, how God communes with you, and how mm. you are actually receptive to information right for another person their personality will be i'll see as i go and it's easy for them that the lord leads them to the sanctification process not even knowing that it has started whereas for Mm. others it's uh, i need an awareness of where we are going for me to commit to what we are doing so our personalities will definitely have an impact on how the sanctification looks um across the board but the, the thing is it's saying we are all being purified that we may bear in fullness the image of the one whom we believe in which is god now one thing that we need to actually even look into is the why why do we need to be sanctified if mm. if the bible says that sanctification proceeds salvation and you find that most of us are literally stuck at the foot of the cross we are where apostle paul mm. says that Yes, grace abounds where sin abounds, but does it mean Mm. that we continue sinning because there's grace? Then it introduces us to this aspect of, oh, there's a prospect as a believer where you can actually not sin. How is that possible? And that Mm. is initiated by the sanctification process because there God is killing your flesh. God is killing your, your will, your emotions, and everything that is related to anything that is unlike him in you. 
Because remember, mm. when you get born again, what gets born again? Your spirit, right? It is the one that gets born again. However, scripture tells us we need to renew our mind. Jesus shows just how the process of sanctification is important. In his prayer, he said to them, Lord, sanctify them with your word. Your word yeah. is truth. However, in this prayer, he's praying for us, those who will come to believe in him through his disciples. And he says to his disciples, in another part of John, he says, you have been made clean by the words that I've spoken to you. Already mm -hmm. there, he's giving us that the purification of a believer comes through the word. And the yeah, why yeah. then is because we are not Christ-like. Our mindset, mm -hmm. as much as you, we all know, you know, you get born again, next week you're back to your old sins. And you're like, okay, am I really saved? What's happening? Yeah. That's because your mind has not been renewed. That's because mm. your heart is still as deceitful. That's because your will and your emotions are still stuck on the old patterns. An example that God made for me on the process of sanctification and why, he was like, look at the children of Israel. The children mm. of Israel are a, a very good example of the actual sanctification process and why we needed to be sanctified. The first start of that is when they go through the Red Sea, which we can define it as the first baptism, right? They go through the Red Sea, leaving, you know, the bounds of Egypt. That is us when we get saved. We pass from sin, which is death, into life, right? And then as we get into this life, we don't have the tools to navigate this life, right? We still have the mindset that we had whilst we were in Egypt. Hence, when God gives us man, we'd be like, what is this? What's this? You know, you know, when we read the word of God as new believers, we get into the space like the very same God <laughs> that drew me through his spirit is as restful as he is in the Old Testament. That shows already that there's a different level that you need to commune with God in in order for you to mm -hmm. receive what God is doing. And that is initiated by the sanctification process. And that is literally initiated by the word. Right? Yes, Jesus yes. makes it plain sanctify them by your word your word is mm. truth but apostle mm. paul says something very profound in, in thessalonians where he says that sanctify them wholly right mm. the spirit their soul and their body then i look at it, what does it mean to sanctify holy why would he specifically say that we as believers must be sanctified holy and it's something that we need to think about in this regard and then we'll start to see the why of the process of sanctification yeah, so I'm just going to read for us um, the scripture that I was speaking about in First Thessalonians. It's actually First Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 23 um, to 24. Uh, and it says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one mm -hmm. who is faithful he will do it so for me here it actually identifies what exactly should be sanctified right we're speaking mm -hmm. about the law of sanctification and the why of sanctification and no scripture clearly paints this out then apostle paul saying that may god may the god of peace sanctify you through and through other scriptures say sanctify you wholly right may your mm -hmm. whole spirit not a part this, I find this very interesting that it says, may your whole spirit, spirit with a small s, and your soul and body be mm. kept painless at the coming of Jesus Christ. This for me then tells me that there is a corruption that we can have in our spirit that is s, right? Even though we are saved. There is a corruption that we might have in our body, even though we are saved. Mm. There is a corruption mm. we may have in our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, even though we are born again. And it is therefore for us to be able to fully bear the image of the Christ, the resurrected Christ who lives in us, we have to be sanctified, right? Mm. And that sanctification mm. work enables us to be vessel. That's why you find other people. Have you ever noticed that people have been like, yo, this person has been saved for years, but the way they are so bitter, you know, they act, the way they act is not you will encounter, right? Um, Guys, uh, you will encounter that you know other Christians are like for years this person has been saved but we don't see the fruits of the spirit of God we don't see the kindness we don't see the forbearance we don't see the self-control mm. and this speaks to the fact that nature mm. can only be changed by the sanctification process the nature of your flesh can only mm. be changed by the sanctification 
which is Galatians, makes it clear that there's the act of the flesh and the act of the spirit. The, 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 the line between those two is the thin line, or actually it's not even a thin line, it's the big line of sanctification. For you to move from the act of the flesh to bearing the fruit of the spirit, you must be sanctified. And that sanctification process, we get it through the word of God. And I don't know whether um, in, in this time we can actually be able to share, like in our own walk, where was that one thing, you know, um, that for me was an identifying factor that uh, something here is off, right? Something here has to change. Even though I've been saved, I don't see an evidence um, of, you know, the fact that I'm saved. And that it made it for me believe and even doubt the fact that I'm actually saved. Tiny, do you have an example, right, of a time or season in your life where you were seeing evidently the acts of the flesh that then made it seem that you were not saved? You know, your friends just throw you under the bus. Like, <laughs> okay, friends, what happened there? Real quick. Um, <laughs> So when are you asking a time when I, I began to think, or the time when I began to realize that my sanctification is happening? No, no, no. Is that what I'm, you asked? We were making an example, right, of people who have been saved, but they're not showing the evidence of the fruit of the spirit, right? And I'm asking for an example of a time in your season in your life where you were like, the word of the Lord says this, but I'm acting like this. Um, and that's when you started to, God would start then the will of sanctification in that particular area. Does it make sense? So as I said, like from the beginning with me, I, I don't know why, maybe because that's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. It's like God would teach me things on the go. Like I learn on the go. Like mm -hmm. I was, I only became aware, I could say now, like that has happened now mm -hmm. to me where I'll look at certain things and I'll be like, God, this is not matching with not only what you said I am or who you've said I am, but mm -hmm the just the 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 image of who you are and if you live in me then these two can they, they can't live in the same place together mm -hmm. and it's it's vast it's not even I can't even say it's just one thing but unbelief and unbelief about something that is big like not unbelief about you know uh, is is Yonel and I going to record this thing no you know we can there we can maneuver we have to record we'll find a way I'm talking about something that's life altering life changing mm -hmm. and and god used my unbelief in what he told me mm -hmm. to show me that my heart towards his word mm -hmm. is not receptive mm -hmm. um and not just the believing of his word but the understanding of the authority of his word mm -hmm. so it it became like a it was a ball just rolling you know mm -hmm. i i've said this in other that we've discussed that this tendency of telling me the truth about myself like he'll he'll honestly tell me he'll, he'll say you're angry mm. and i'll be like fine and he's like okay yeah <laughs> and then something happens mm. that reveals that i'm actually really angry and then he, i'll like i'll come back and be like lord mm. you were right mm. actually angry. Mm. you know um it's like that because when i think of sanctification i think that transformation aspect of it the mm. changing from glory to glory i've definitely like in the past five years, I can say, my life has moved more and more into being molded into the image of God, like in, in almost every facet. Like there are obviously spaces where, I don't know, I, maybe we could say time-wise, I'm, I'm not there yet in terms of getting what God is saying, or it could be that the, the wound is so deep that God is like pacing it in terms of the, the healing part of it. But the moving me into... The, the beholding of his image and then letting that transform me my whole life everything every aspect of my life from the hair that I do at the salon I went to to he sent me there I saw it in a vision and mm. I went there and lo and behold the lady that I found there knows how to do black hair you mm. know stuff like that like mm -hmm. so it it's more I think what God is pulling us to is really more and more into the relationship that he has with Christ and how Christ trusts him and to death because, I mean, it's not like he just trusts him, like, carelessly. He trusts him because he knows him. Yeah. He trusts him because he trusts him. Yeah. Wow. He trusts him because he trusts him. Yes. He trusts <laughs> yeah. Him because he trusts him. I feel you. Yeah. And, and, Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's had an experience with him that has proven that God is trustworthy. Mm. And so I think 
the one thing that you were talking about when you were talking about that script in second first Thessalonians is the the aspect of it that holistic you know that in your soul in your spirit in your but like the whole image of christ is not barren in some places but flourishing in other places mm. and that's why i say in the past five six years like mm. i've seen god speak to areas of my life that i thought why do you care about this yeah why are you concerned about my body like yeah let's talk about the angel like, yeah. no, you know? <laughs> you know? and he's concerned yeah. about being yeah. holistic he wants to build me up holistically like yeah. that balance you know where he teaches me that it's okay to be passionate about things yeah. but it's also okay to be chill yeah. it's okay you know to be to find certain things annoying but not to the extent that now you're just annoyed all the time like yeah. you're a human being you're yeah. going to experience things as a human being but yeah. to constantly be led by god to constantly understand that not only is he at the center of you yeah. it's in him that you have this, mm. where you move, you live, you have your being, it's in him. Mm. And so the more you transform to him into the image that he calls you to, especially with sanctification. And mm. I think that's why it's really great that we're going to go into like more depth next week in terms of the how. And, and I think the how is also going to really heighten the why, you know, yeah. sanctification. Like while you were talking, I was thinking about how this is not an option. Like it's mm. not... Ah, I'll do it or ah, I won't, mm. you know, it's the word of God. The word of God is the truth. Mm. And the truth, what it means is that if it doesn't happen, you're going to be barren of certain things. And that's what sucks. Because sure. if, if we don't, if we don't take the word of God as the truth, meaning as the highest authority, mm. then that means we'll see things like our human traditions have made the gospel of no effect. We'll see things like what you're saying, that people have been safe for so long and we don't see any fruits. We don't see any change, which then people rightfully can ask, why should I get saved? Mm. Why should I, like, why do I need to give my life to Jesus? They look at your life and they think, nothing about you has changed. Nothing about you has improved. Mm. Nothing about you has grown. You're still in the same place. And sadly, because we become, all of us have met or, been introduced to God through people. Like either your grandmother forced you to go to church or something, it was through a person. Mm -hmm. And so the same way works with the lives that we live, they inform people about the God we speak about. And mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily just about us getting the material wealth, which is great, we need it, we do. Mm -hmm. But it's about transformation of seeing God's heart now come alive in you. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, in, in literally, I kid you not, the past five years has been that for me. Mm -hmm. like. It's been me moving in, in sanctification in ways that at some point I was like, God, my favorite line, you're killing me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you're killing me, He's <laughs> like, that's mm. the point. Mm. <laughs> so I can come alive in you. Mm. The things I cared about then, you know, and the things I could not say no to then, I'm able not even to say no, I don't even have an interest in them anymore. The, mm. the, my thinking patterns, the things that informed the decisions that I made and how I made those decisions completely changed. Mm. The way I even see myself mm. is challenged, mm. you know, to move from an incapacitated state where I'm the victim of mm -hmm. my childhood, my past, mm. into I'm a child of God. Yeah. What God says goes. Yeah. Do I agree with it? Let's go then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think that's what sanctification really has capacity to change your life into what God is saying your life can be. Mm. so that's why i think not to overlook it but to really take it seriously it's the reason most of us haven't seen god we talk of him but we've never seen him we don't know him we don't know that certain things are never supposed to happen to us because we're children of god yeah. like you're never supposed to be confused to the point where you feel in, like you're going crazy mm. you, those are not that that's i actually should do a thread on this is god this is not God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. Just to help us, you know. So, I yeah. I, I know that was like lengthy, but it's my whole life. It's okay. I understand. I understand. I mean, you touched really on, a, on an aspect that the Lord and I were speaking about today where sanctification is concerned. You strike um, a chord when you were talking about balance and how we in Him we live mm. and have our being. But it's the balance aspect for mm. me that just 
went like ding, 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 ding. And this is something that even in our sanctification process, even as friends, we've had to have a chat about that as much as God is sanctifying us to bear his image, he's not totally discarding tiny altogether. He's not totally discarding Yonella altogether. There's a balance. The personality mm. that God designed, you know, the personality where you are whole, you know, you are not broken, you're not affected by sin, you know, the, the gifts and talents that he put in you, he's not going to chuck them out because he's sanctifying you. There's a balance. And I think that's something we really need to teach on and actually understand that he's purifying you, right? As the Bible speaks mm. about, Apostle Paul speaks about that when you are saved, if you're a slave, you continue to be a slave, but now a slave for Christ. If you mm. are you were like um, a person who was carefree, like had no anxiety, now you literally cast all your anxieties unto the Lord, right? He speaks mm. about you, we remain as we were, but the difference is that it is in the Lord. So the gifts, yes. their talents and everything in the sanctifica sanctification process, they, they don't get discarded, but they become mm. used for the Lord. Like there's a balance. You are bearing Christ's mm. image, right? But however Christ is expressed through you, Right. If you're a female, Christ is expressed to you as a female. If you're in a certain career, Christ is expressed in you in that career. If he tells you to change that career, he is expressed in you using those gifts and talents. And that's mm. one thing that we actually even need to look into. And even as we go into the to the to part two, is that there's a balance in the sanctification process. As much mm. as we are spirit, our true identity as children of God is that we are spirit. We are born mm. in the spirit, right? Yeah. However, we are in this earthly body. So when the Lord mm. sanctifies us wholly, he balances that, that, that out, that you are able to function in the earthly body even though you are in the spiritual realm, right? And it's never a, a, a thing that is overpowering so much so that you cannot connect with earthly things. You know, Tiny said something very profound that God speaks to every area of our lives. In the past five years, God spoke to every area of our life from her clothing to the mm -hmm. hair that she has on right now. And for me, that speaks to a God who's intentional. The way we relate is based on how we look. Now, if God in the sanctification process entirely checks out the fact that you love braided hair, mm -hmm. how do you relate with people who are in the world? Jesus says in his prayer in John 17, I pray that you do not take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. So our mandate is that we are not of the world, but we are part of the world and we need to still win the world over to God. And in the mm -hmm. sanctification process, I pray because I know the enemy can be extreme. Let's be honest and real. Yeah. The reason why some of us don't see the fruits of the Holy Spirit is because the enemy has literally highlighted, over highlighted an aspect of sanctification that we literally miss our ability to connect with the yeah. fact that we are on the ethan vessel, right? We are in the body. Mm -hmm. And then it makes it difficult for us to even evangelize or reach out to people Gosh. because we have gone extreme. Have you seen like Christian extremists, you know, people who like literally have avoided any contact with the natural world, then go be with the father if that is the case, you know? And Why are you in a body? Exactly. <laughs> <I'm> in a body. <laughs> you see, so all those things that we were talking about, that this this topic is so loaded, there's so much. Yeah. Loaded. But as we wrap yeah. up, we want you guys to know that the reason why we must be sanctified is because we mm. are born into sin. When we get born again, it's our spirit, right, that is renewed. However, our body, our soul, right, mm. still need the change. They still need to bear mm. God's image. And it is in this process then that God ensures that as we behold him in the mirror of his word, we become more and more like him. I was so excited, man, to continue, you know, this conversation of sanctification. I agree. You know, and, and just have the many steps <laughs> of pulling them out. And also, mm -hmm. uh, we want to let you know, guys, that we actually did a link for you guys, uh, which is a survey, just to also observe where we at in terms of this knowledge. To some of us, this might have been new. I mean, even our, in mm. our own research, it was new in the sense that we might have experienced it, but the information of the fact that scripture speaks about what we we're going through was new to us. And we want yeah. to gauge just where we, we are as saints in this topic, so that by the time we go to part two, we're able to cater directly to all of our needs. We look, ex yeah, we look forward to part two and really excited. I don't know if Tiny has anything to say um, before we down <laughs> oh definitely i mean also i think one thing maybe it's because of the space that i'm in where god is really challenging my thinking in terms of the word like if you say it's a new word where is it 
I want to see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and by faith. So it's really us also, it's, it's God's mercy trying to bring us to the awareness that guys, if you're living for God, there's certain things you need to start seeing. The word must become flesh in your life. Mm. If, it, if it truly be Jesus, right? And so also the survey is here to serve as for you to see you, where you are at, gauge yourself. Are you in a space where you even understand what sanctification is, what salvation is? Um, and if you're able to, in, in Spades' favorite words, if you can't explain it, you don't know it. <laughs> because the thing is, if we're Christians, we're going, to, we're going to evangelize, we're going to teach others. What are we going to teach them? We're going to teach them what we know, right? And so I think the, the, the thing that I'm excited about mostly is what I've been even hearing like in my spirit that even as we go forward, as we keep praying for, for people um, in their sanctification process is to also remember the capacity of the Holy Spirit to be able to do that transformation. So to continue to pray that he would like really, really touch the hearts of people and that they would be able to see that God is real and God is good and God is with them. He's never left them or forsaken them. He's always been here trying to guide them, guide their steps. So for some people, this is not the first time God has been trying to push you in the sanctification side of things, the way he's calling you to. This is him trying for the 10th time to say, go, stop, like abruptly stopping the process because you get scared or, you know, whatever it is, but to show you that I'm with you, I got you, that you're going in the right direction. You know what I mean? And even for the ones that just got saved, for them to press in and to persist and keep going. Because the one thing about God, where he is, you'll know. <laughs> He, he will show up. No. You know what I mean? And so that's my prayer really for everyone. Well, the glory just blessed me. That's yeah. my prayer. For everyone. Yeah. My prayer is that the same way God has shown himself to us in the sanctification process. We were scared, sure. We were, I, I was scared because he was wrong. <laughs> mm. But for him to show up for people like that as well, for we pray that God would really do what he says and show up for his people in, in aiding them be what he has called them to be. And to remember that he really is able and he wants to. Like God, like when he said to, when Jesus said to that man, when he said, like, heal me if you're willing. And Jesus said, I, I'm willing, like I want to, you know? So to just really pray that over everyone and back up for part two. Definitely. Love you, let's. Definitely. Alrighty, bye guys. I'm kidding. <laughs> bye. bye guys, see you next week. <laughs>